Kitchen Show. It's May, which means it's time for our fifth totally Tunisian counter blanket square. And this month, we're going to learn the Tunisian knit stitch. The Tunisian knit stitch does a pretty good job of pretty much exactly replicating what's known as the stockingette stitch in knitting terminology. The stockingette stitch is so common that it's probably the stitch you think of when someone says to you knit or knit sweater. In fact, that's probably why this is called the Tunisian knit stitch. The Tunisian knit stitch might just be the easiest stitch we've learned so far in this series. There's no real pattern to remember, there's no repeats or anything, it's basically the same thing over and over. And the knit stitch is created by where you place your hook to pick up a loop on the forward pass. And the reverse pass is standard, it's just like all the other ones we've done so far. So, really easy. In fact, I think this stitch moves a little faster than some of the other ones we've done too. That said, there are two things I want you to keep in mind while we're working on this square. One, the knit stitch is going to roll. At the end of row 32, you're going to have a little Tunisian burrito hanging off of your hook. <laughs> but that's what blocking is for. And I'm going to talk about blocking a little further on in the video. And we've got links to our blocking tutorials in the description box if you need a little extra help with that. And the second thing I want you to remember is that the knit stitch is a tighter stitch. Kind of like the full stitch back in February. So you might find by the time you get to the end of row 32 that your square is shorter than it is wide. Mine is, you'll see that in the video, don't panic. If you feel you have tight tension naturally, please feel free to go up a full hook size for this square. That would be the six and a half millimeter or the K. Now I use the same hook, but that's just me and I worried about just blocking it out at the end to get it to lie flat and to just sort of stretch it up and down. Now, another thing about the blocking, my square is just a little bit smaller than some of the other squares in the series and you might find that too, again, not a big issue. The important thing is that all of our squares have the same number of stitches, so the same stitch count, and the same, same row count. And that way, when we put them all together, everything will play nicely, and we can always block our project again at the end, and that will allow us to make everything size up or size down to match its neighbor. So don't worry about the sizing. Feel free to use a bigger hook, but don't stress about the sizing. And it is tight, so expect that. All right, let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up the Tunisian knit stitch square together. <laughs> For this month's square, I'm using the same yarn I've been using all along. That's a size four medium weight acrylic yarn. I want around 90 yards for the main square color and an additional 10 yards for the border. We want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and a long Tunisian or Afghan crochet hook. This is a five and a half millimeter hook. And I also want a five and a half millimeter regular crochet hook. This is optional, but I find it easier to switch to a regular hook when I crochet the border onto my Tunisian square. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. Please visit our shop and purchase a pattern. It helps support our show. And we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. As usual, I recommend doing a little sampler for the Tunisian knit stitch. This is six chains by six rows. You can easily count the rows on this pattern by just counting the little running stitch that runs up the side. And working a little sampler helps get you comfortable with the pattern overall. What's nice about this is that you can also just use a regular sized crochet hook to work the little sampler before you switch up to the large Tunisian hook. The Tunisian knit stitch can be worked across any number of foundation chains and worked along any number of rows, but for the squares in this series, we're going to begin with a slip knot and chain 38 to begin. We'll be working off of 38 foundation chains and we'll be working 32 rows in total for this project. Once you've chained 38, make sure you have 38 chains and the first row is going to be our establishing row. We will just be picking up a loop in each chain all the way across. The first loop on your hook, or the one that's left there from chaining 38, is using the last chain. So this chain right below your hook already has a loop, so you skip that one, move on to the second chain, and pick up a loop in that chain. Move to the third, pick up a loop, Move to the next chain, pick up a loop, 
and so on all the way across. Once you get to the end, you'll have 38 loops on your long Tunisian hook. Once you've picked up a loop in each of those remaining 37 chains, remember the first chain away from the hook already had a loop, you should have 38 loops on your hook. Take a moment to unravel that little bit of bunching that can happen. Make sure you have 38 loops. And the first pass, in fact, all the reverse passes for the Tunisian knit stitch is your standard reverse pass. So same thing for every single row. When you're ready to work your reverse pass, yarn over, pull back through the first loop only, and then yarn over and pull back through two loops. Yarn over, pull back through two, yarn over, pull back through two. I find it very helpful to kind of hang on to the loops directly below my hook. That gives me a lot of control over my work and will eventually help me speed up as I do these standard reverse passes. At the end of every reverse pass, you'll be left with one loop on your hook. That loop is represented by this stitch down here. So whenever you start a successive row of knit stitch, you'll always be starting in the next stitch. So this little guy is always represented by the loop that's left on your hook. So you always start in the second stitch. You can count your stitches by counting those vertical bars. And the vertical bars are very important for the knit stitch. Every stitch is created by where you place your hook, not so much how you wrap your yarn. So it's a regular yarn wrap, but it's where we place our hook to pick up the yarn that creates the knit stitch. If you recall, in the full stitch, we were placing our hook underneath these two vertical loops that run in between, or I should say the horizontal loops that run in between the vertical loops. But for the, full, the, the knit stitch, we want to actually find that vertical bar and kind of pull it sideways where you can see the whole thing kind of loops over top of those little horizontal bars. So you see that little guy that sits right behind it? It's like a horseshoe that's looped over top of these horizontal loops here. So what you want to do is take your hook and place it in between, so right through the fabric between those two vertical bars. So the front vertical bar and the vertical bar on the back. Pick up a loop as usual, and you'll be picking it up in between those two vertical bars. So if you pull up on that loop, you should see now that horseshoe is sitting directly out front and it looks like a knit stitch. You go to the next vertical bar and you want to place your hook between the vertical bar all the way through to the back. So you're placing it right through the vertical bars as opposed to underneath the horizontal bars that run in between. And you can tell you've done it right if you pick up a loop and you see that little horseshoe or that what looks like a knit stitch sitting underneath the loop. Find the next vertical bar. You're ignoring the horizontal stitches. So these guys here, you're not putting your hook through them. So you see that space? You're not using the space. You're going right next to it and you're looking for those, that vertical bar. You're placing your hook between the vertical bars that make up that horseshoe that loops over top of the horizontal bars. And when you pick up the loop, you can see that nice even knit stitch. So both vertical bars are kind of pulled to the front of your work. And if you pull up on all of it, you can see it looks like knitting. And that's all you've got to do all the way across. Just look for that vertical bar, place your hook right through the fabric, pick up a loop. And if you're unsure if you got the whole thing, pull up on it and you should see that nice little horseshoe all the way looks like your, your loop is sort of sitting in the middle of a little horseshoe. So that's all you have to look for. And you're going to pick up a loop in each one of those vertical stitches, right between the bars, the front and the back vertical bars, all the way across. When you get across to the end and you're working your last Tunisian knit stitch, look for that final vertical bar, plunk your hook right through it, and if you want, pick up that little bit of a loop that kind of wants to fold over the edge. You don't have to. You can also just put your hook right through that final vertical bar, 
It's entirely up to you, but try to be kind of consistent. Either way, pick up your last Tunisian knit stitch, and if you're unsure, just take a look. Make sure that that little horseshoe shape is looped over top of the, the loop sitting on your hook. And then count them up. You should have 38 loops on your hook. And then it's just a standard reverse pass from here. Yarn over, pull back through the first loop only. Yarn over, pull back through two. Yarn over, pull back through two. Yarn over, pull back through two. All the way across. And you'll be left with one loop on your hook again. When you finish your reverse pass, you'll be left with one loop on your hook. That loop is already using this first vertical bar. We can see that we've done two rows in our square so far. We're going to be doing 32 rows in total, so we only have 30 more rows to go. And if you kind of pull apart your work, you can see that knit stitch starting to happen. So it looks like actual knitting. It'll look a lot easier to see a few rows in and you're going to notice that the knit stitch really wants to roll. So this is one of those curly stitches. You're definitely going to want to block your work after this. And it can be a little on the tighter side. So if you're having trouble keeping your tension nice and loose and easy going, you might want to switch to a larger hook size. That will help you with your tension for the Tunisian knit stitch. And every row is basically the same as the last. You find the next vertical bar, this is where we start, poke your, bar, your hook right through the vertical stitch to the back, it'll go between the two vertical bars, and pull up, you should see that little horseshoe effect looping over top of the loop on your hook, so that little horseshoe effect, you know you've done it right. Find the next one, poke it right through, between the two vertical bars from the front and the back, pick up a loop, and there you can really see that knit stitch starting. It looks just like a sweater. This is so cool that we can get an actual knit look using a crochet hook. You're going to pick up a loop in each of those vertical bars. So this is a Tunisian knit stitch. You pass your hook right through the fabric between the vertical bars, the front and the back ones, to pick up a loop, and you'll see that nice little horseshoe effect happening. You do that in each stitch all the way across, and then you do a standard reverse pass all the way back. Each row is exactly the same as the row before. Try to keep your tension relaxed. If you have trouble with that, switch up to a larger hook size, and just put your feet up, and practice the Tunisian knit stitch. At the end of every forward pass where you've picked up your Tunisian knit stitches, double check to make you have make sure you have 38 loops on your hook. And if you're unsure, making sure that you, you made a Tunisian knit stitch and not accidentally a Tunisian full stitch, just pull down and double check that you've got that little horseshoe effect going around every single one of your loops. Satisfied? Start the reverse pass, yarn over, pull back through one loop only, yarn over, pull back through two, all the way to the end, you'll be back to one loop on your hook, and then you start the Tunisian knit stitch all over again. Insert your hook between the vertical bars of each stitch all the way across, right through the fabric to pick up a loop, and that is how we get this very believable looking knit stitch to happen. And yes, it's curly. It's very curly. It's going to want a burrito on you. <laughs> so we will be definitely wanting to carefully block this square when we're finished. I have now completed 32 rows in total, and I have a burrito. <laughs> My knit stitch square is wider than it is tall because this is a tighter stitch, so I will definitely want to block it. And just like the February full stitch square, while I'm blocking it, I will be focusing on pulling gently up and down and not side to side. And I'm using my January square as the template sizing for shaping of my square. Having said that, you can clearly see now that beautiful knit stitch pattern that we were able to create by picking up loops by going through the vertical bars of the stitch. And that's 
here's the vertical bar and you're going through it to the back as opposed to under the horizontal bars where that big space is. So that is the knit stitch. Once you've completed 32 rows, you can fasten off unless you are just going to go straight into the border, which of course you can do. And if you aren't changing colors, then you just want to chain one. I'm switching now to my regular crochet hook. I find that's the easiest way to work the border and I'm gonna grab my border color. I'm gonna take my border color now. I'm going to put a slip knot on my hook and we're gonna join with a single crochet. So if you're not changing color, you chained one and you're going to single crochet directly into that first vertical bar. Or if you're changing color like me, you're going to join your color with a single crochet in that vertical bar. So you're just going to pick up a loop. I will be working over top of all my little short tails here and single crochet. Like all of the other squares so far in the series, you're going to single crochet in each vertical bar all the way across. So we are back to just picking up a stitch in the vertical bar. We are not working through the fabric. We are just single crocheting into each vertical bar as I'm doing here. You'll have 30, 38 stitches all the way across the top. There we go. <laughs> 38 stitches all the way across the top. That's 38 single crochet all the way across the top worked into the front post or the front vertical bar of each stitch. Work a single crochet, chain one single crochet into the last vertical bar and that second single crochet becomes the first stitch down the side of your square. You have 32 rows, so you'll have 32 single crochets all the way down and then you're gonna to get to the foundation chain row where you'll be working single crochet, chain one single crochet. So you'll have a total of 33 single crochet down the edge, one for each row of Tunisian crochet and one worked into the edge of your foundation chain row. And you're just grabbing that vertical bar. It's sort of the edge of the knit stitch all the way down, really easy to see. It's completely uniform all the way down. Just grab the front loop. You don't need to go through the whole thing. We are trying to keep some consistency with all of the squares in this project. So single crochet in every single front post or front vertical bar. It's just that front loop of the knit stitch all the way down. And I'll catch up with you at the foundation chain row. That's a single crochet in the edge of each row all the way down, so that's 32. And then we get to the foundation chain row. We're going to work single crochet, chain one and single crochet in the same first foundation stitch. That makes 33 single crochet all the way down the side of your square and then the first single crochet along the bottom. You're going to work a single crochet in each foundation chain across, and you'll have 38 stitches across the bottom of your square as well. When you get to the very last chain, work single crochet, chain one, single crochet in that last foundation chain, and then you're going to work a single crochet into each front facing vertical post or vertical bar of each stitch all the way up the side. This is also easy to see. You just want to grab the front one. So this would be both. You want to grab just the front, just like the previous squares in this series. Single crochet in the front vertical post of each of those first stitches all the way up the side, including the single crochet in the foundation chain row at the bottom, you'll have 33 stitches running up your second side, just like the first side. 
and I'll catch up with you at the top. The last single crochet in the border is number 33 here along the side worked into the same vertical bar that you joined your yarn in or where you placed your first single crochet. Single crochet, chain one and join with a slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet. You can snip your yarn, fasten off and weave in that tail. Now, of course, you're going to want to block this, otherwise you've got a burrito. <laughs> Not a big deal, just remember when you're blocking you want to pull it lengthwise with the knit stitch and not so much widthwise because this is probably already as wide as you want it to be but just not as tall and that's just because the knit stitch is a tighter more compact Tunisian stitch. And there is my knit stitch square, all neat and tidy and blocked. Remember when you block something, whether you wet block it or steam block it, you want to let it dry completely before you put it away for storage or give it away or pack it up or wrap it, whatever it is you're doing, make sure it's completely dry. And when you are steam blocking or wet blocking an object that wants to roll, remember to block it in the reverse direction of the roll. So in this case, I made sure it was laying face down when I blocked it, and I blocked it so that the roll was kind of pushing itself into the surface uh, that I was blocking it against. So we do have a tutorial on steam blocking and also one on wet blocking. We'll put those in the description box down below if you need some additional help. The Tunisian knit stitch looks just like the stocking knit stitch, really easy to do but it does want to roll, so make sure you take the time to block your square. I hope you enjoyed working along with us this week, making the Tunisian Knit Stitch, working on our calendar blanket, and we will see you soon here on the Jada and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a wonderful week. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh! And don't forget to subscribe!